Hello, I'm so glad you came to join us. Would you like to make a wish in the fountain? Uh, yes. Yeah. Close my eyes. <laughs> okay. Yep. It'll help make your wish come true. Nice. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Fantastic. That's such a nice feeling thing to do to make a wish. Maybe it was because it's almost Valentine's Day, a wish on love. Or maybe it was a wish for uh, more love in the world. Maybe. One just wished for the people they love to be healthy in this next year and strong. Start our conversation today with Susanna and the elders. At 16, she grew up in Rome. Her father, Orazio, was a famous painter. Everyone came over to his home studio. It was like the place to be to be like networking and a ton of guys came through there and that was really kind of um probably made her feel a little vulnerable she was probably gawked at by a lot of like old guys right so here she is at 16 year old painting Suzanne and the elders and pushing off like two two elder men and one visitor at the museum said it looks like he has a huge huge weight on his back and it's true his cape right was um you know the cape of misogyny and um uh, entitlement right uh thinking that their behavior was superior to all, all other people and truly in that time as well as today we still battle these same issues so here we have her saying no, 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 and pushing off these predatory men who are likely always in her sphere. Now, unfortunately, uh, her father did think that one of his partners, Agostino Tassi, who he was painting a, a ceiling mural with, was uh, special enough to be her tutor and appointed as a, him as a mentor. And unfortunately, he did sexually attack her. And we have over 300 pages of written testimony of their court trial. And so we know what happens within that story in which her voice ends up triumphing and she wins her case. Now, this was not That's without awesome thumbscrew tortures, invasive physical checks on her body, uh, and, and like long, horrible interrogations, right? It was a terrible public trial. So afterwards, she, when she was done, she was like, thank you, goodbye to Rome. And of course, his justice was never carried out. Um, but she left Rome and went off to Florence. And from here, we'll, we'll head off to the next painting. And this was Judas slaying Holofernes. The biblical story is that Judas went in to the tent of this aggressor general and slayed him and put his head in a bag and ran off and her maidservant Abra was a, a real helper, a real collaborator in the event. And you can see in the painting that it really takes both their strengths to do the job. She, she, you know, you can see the shadows and that highlight her sensual like curves and, and the way she executes and beheads his um, body cleaving it off of his torso um, really debilitates this uh, horrible person that she's creating. Now, people speculated, did Agostino Tassi look like this character that she painted? And no, actually, he didn't look like, like this person, but how could I not see that within it, right? Maybe this is just her her all male this is this is the head she's gonna 
take off. Hello, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I love that you're with Thank us. You. <laughs> so even even like this painting, we don't know what happened. Um, uh, at some point, it must have been cropped. But even the way the painting is sheared off of the left side, we just see that all of Holofernes' limbs are, are severed. He's no longer um, has any power. And, and that's just a triumphant moment. The significance I always see within this painting as well is that Abra, her maidservant, is an active participant, a real collaborator. We're able to know this fact from the 300-page court document of her public rape trial that while Agostino Tassi and another man offended her, uh, she repeatedly you know, fought back and said, no, no, no. He started his attack with no more painting. So clearly she was a threat to his perceived excellence. But her maidservant was nearby and she didn't, um, she didn't intervene. Maybe she was afraid too. So this is a culture and a time still like, you know, many people face throughout this world where it, it's not safe to say stop or me too. So, but here she's actively able to uh, make this partnership. This painting is <laughs> called Self-Portrait as St. Catherine of Alexandria. I call it now a Catherine wheel, but during her torture, the wheel broke and um, it showed her innocence. Now, Artemisia was tortured while she was interrogated. Her thumbs were put into um, vices and tightened, and that's very hard for a painter emotionally and physically to get over that kind of trauma. Um, I don't know one, everyone has losses. Um, a sick person or has been like you know in a survival situation there's not one among us so here she stares out at us really like an intense gaze and and we see her with our reflection and she's really owning her trauma she she puts her hand on that broken wheel and says you know I, I, I was my hands my thumbs were crushed but I am not crushed, and I see you, and you see me. She really allows you to um, connect with her, and that's part of why this painting also has the opportunity for a group selfie spot. I'll bring over some of the the works. Yes, yes, this is her 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 Phoenix Rising painting. The other thing she was was an incredible marketer. People back then didn't have Instagram or Facebook, right? So she had a special gift painting herself in her her paintings. Let's, let's all gather together for a selfie spot. She would have loved um, selfies. Okay. Would you like to hold the wheel? You bet. The crown? Thank you. Oh, that's a beautiful photo. Mm -hmm. I've got the heart there. Three, two, one. Thank you. <laughs> so awesome. So yeah, yeah. She's starting to triumph, and around this time, her commissions are seeing princes and kings and huge commissions. She is really starting to become like this self-sufficient, like uh, a boss lady, and we're gonna really see that over here as well. She's saying two things here. She's one saying, buy my painting. And she's also <laughs> falling in love. She, yes, she was married. Her marriage was a little rocky. They both had other interests. So um, she met somebody and she wrote this person long letters of 
of her loves and and her losses. She lost a one of her children died, and she wrote like a tragic, like heart wrenching, like declaration of her pain. Medici accounts of a party that they had where a guest Artemisia came dressed as a gypsy and she played her lute. Now, yeah, you can wear it. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, there that's nice. Super. You have a great smile. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Facebook Horizon programmed it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to look next at these two paintings together. Caravaggio painted his version of Judith and Holofernes back in 1598. And his version of, of Holofernes, now we saw, we saw uh, the earlier version that Artemisia created downstairs in 1612, but she repaints it again in 1620. We have action and we have power and we have more blood and gore than ever hmm. before in her vengeful women paintings. No fury like a woman scorned. That's right. That's better, that's, uh, that's better believe it. <laughs> We're looking at the difference between Caravaggio's version and Artemisia's version. What do you think of this Judith? Is this Judith believable? Do we think that she could do the deed? Could she actually cut off this guy's head? Well, in this one, the, the, the handmaiden's not helping at all. She's just kind of standing there going, oh my. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I think at some point, I think at some point she's like, okay, you're going too far with this one. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she would say, she doesn't feel like an accomplice, does she? No. No. She doesn't look happy. Yeah. And and this Judith looks so meek and frail, you wouldn't believe that she could actually, like, she wouldn't want to get blood on her hands or her dress. Hi, welcome. And she wouldn't actually be able to, you know, finish the job without um alerting somebody crying or having years of of horrible trauma for from the experience and guilt right she however the interesting thing is the real model that was used to paint this had a very hard life uh the woman who was the model from you know the look before she was 12 13 years old there are records again uh, public records of her arrests for prostitution uh, again and again through her life she was forced into horrible misogynistic violent situations so maybe she could have done the job now we see instead a, a real force of power here this is Artemisia at her full power triumph and resilience. She friends with Galileo. She knows about trajectory um, science, right? So we see the blood having um, like a mathematical squirted on her dress. We see that their limbs are in full force of action. The two are working together as full collaborating partners. The limbs are like the painting is not severed on this version but the limbs are completely like um twisted and incapacitated and like shortened for hall of fairness i like the way the blood squirts from his neck <laughs> me too <As> he stabbed <laughs> me too arterial spray yeah, yeah. It's like a release of pressure, you know, like he just wanted to be left alone. Right? And he's just he's just gone now. Yeah. It's like a release. Yeah. It, it was the 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 artist's release and the narrative character's release. As the allegory of painting, La Pittura. 
at this point of her career, Artemisia was, you know, really, you know, super established, but she also struggled a lot. She had to write her landlord over and over again that, you know, uh, you know, he wanted rent from her. Some of her clients were kind of screwing around with not pay paying her for her paintings. Her grand lover that she was totally crazy about uh, a few paintings ago that we talked about in the lute player was now writing poetry uh, with his buddies disparaging her. So she was kind of feeling kind of like a lot of pressure, but at the same time, she was balancing her life in a way like we are today in like failing forward using iteration of life to you know love ourselves anyway and excuse um, our hardships uh, our losses and to also um, feel fully self-empowered we are our greatest legacy to our family, our loved ones, and our communities. And Artemisia really triumphed. She was the most famous painter of the entire 17th century Baroque. And even today, when you Google her, um, like Google Analytics, her name is like really, really spiked. For a long time, it fell into obscurity because of misogyny, a lot of, like even the Medici's put her painting uh, in a back hall for a long time because they said it was too disturbing, it was too gory and upsetting for them. And then, you know, through obscurity and just art history highlighting men painters, it wasn't until the feminist movement in the 1970s where she became really uh, brought to the forefront again. So I celebrate, you know, I, I'm a survivor of trauma and violence and abuse and public shame and triumph and career um, struggles and failing forward and triumphs beyond the dreams I ever imagined in my life. Today, I am like La Petura. And if you feel like La Petura too, not only are you able to dress up like her and take a selfie together, but you're able to hop into this room and try on a dress, the green dress created by Nava K and paint with interactive paint brushes like Artemisia and paint your story. Yeah. So just like this, just like that. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. See? Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I feel ridiculous, but that's pretty good. <laughs> I, I love that. I I'll see <laughs> it's good to feel a little ridiculous. We're able to look at more paintings and ask what's happening in the painting and why we think so, or we can just start grabbing things and kind of improv battle or act with each other. So like somebody's gonna stab me in the throat? Some... Is that how it's gonna yeah. work? I... I got a personal space <laughs> button that I can press. I'm getting pretty scared here. Yeah. <laughs> or battle with a paintbrush. Yeah. There's some more crowns. <laughs> Elizabeth, would you like this crown? Sure. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Bink, bink, bink. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're showing your age, dude. Would you, would you, would you yeah. like this crown? <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> I am the power. The power. Let, let's come together I for... I was actually more of a She-Ra girl myself. Yeah. Let's get together for a She-Ra and He-Man selfie. Yeah, I was, I was definitely more of a She-Ra girl myself. Yeah.